Hello everyone and welcome back to my winter world. In our last episode, we made this blacksmith with the iron farm beneath us and we also made a snow globe that has a snow farm inside it. Now, in between episodes, I have been making some commentary long plays and we just finished these two gingerbread houses. This one is a gingerbread hotel with lots of uh, beds and places for our villagers to stay. And this other one is our Santa's mail room with kind of just a little countertop. The villagers can stay behind the desk. And then on the other side, we've just got a little mail room, lots of barrels, storage for books and letters to Santa and all that fun stuff. And we also made these candy crop fields. So we have a potato one here, a wheat field over there, and then we also have a wheat field over here. And in free cam, this is what it looks like. And I think it's so cute to see the gingerbread village coming together, slowly being built up, buildings being replaced. I love it so much. Now there is something very special about today. It is Christmas Eve when I'm uploading this, so of course we have to do some fun, festive Christmas Eve builds. And I'm thinking we make a giant Christmas tree in our town square here, decorate our paths all cute, and I also want to move our nether portal that's just been behind our house and I had the idea to make some giant presents to hide it. If you're enjoying this series so far, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't, and let's get into it. Now the first thing I want to do is use the name tags that I was able to find on some adventures to name tag all of our little bunnies because we actually found five on our adventures. And I heard a wandering trader. Oh, why are you just holding milk? Hello, are you broken? <laughs> Hi, sir. What is up? Um, you know, for the first time, I don't really need anything from you, but I I do kind of want the lead, so, uh, friends, close your eyes. Or just plug your ears, you know? It's fine. That wandering trader just gave me some free leads. How very nice of them. I'm, I'm just kidding. We all, we all know what just happened. Now we're gonna go use the anvil outside our blacksmith and start name tagging our little f bunny friends. So we had Oreo. Coco, Peppermint, we had Chip, and we had Arctic, and I think I spelled that wrong on my sign, so we'll correct it now. Now for the task of naming all these bunnies without accidentally renaming the same one twice and wasting a name tag. So we've got Arctic, we've got Chip, Peppermint, Coco and Oreo. There we go. They've all got their little name tags. And don't worry, we will be giving them a house. We're going to make them a cozy little bunny house. I, I just don't have a place for them yet. So for now, they will stay here. But at least we've got all of their names on them now. So even if they get out and escape, you know, we can find our little friends again. But since it is night, we are going to sleep. Now that it's the next morning, the first project I want to work out is moving our nether portal because this just doesn't fit the Christmassy vibes. So I'm thinking we're going to take our nether portal and we are going to move it closer to where we have our gingerbread village because I want to use the portal to hide it within some giant presents. So because the nether portal has the purple kind of like swirly portal colors, I'm thinking we make some giant presents right here, one of them being the size of our nether portal, and it's going to be purple so that the purple swirly nether portal bits kind of blends in with the purple, probably concrete, I would assume, but we're gonna kind of have one present be a purpley color, probably one be red, one be blue, one be yellow, but just some colorful presents to kind of just fill in this area, like a gingerbread village, Santa's area, so I think it will be great. So the first things we need to collect is a bunch of sand, gravel, dyes, and then we're gonna move the portal. So we started by checking our current collection of dyes and we grabbed some light blue and purple dye. We collected up some daisies so we could turn those into some yellow dye. We visited our iron farm to grab some poppies to turn those into some red dyes. Then we collected up all of the gravel we had and realized we needed a lot more sand. So we went off to go collect some more sand. Oh, I almost forgot. I have this new skin and I didn't even mention that we had it. So this is my Christmassy skin with our little snowman shoes. I'm such a big fan with our little Christmas overalls. I'll go into free cam so you can see 
We've got a nice cute little Christmas tree on the back. We've got a fur lined hood that's nice and white and fluffy. And then we've got some cute little earmuffs as well. And I think it is super festive and super cute. So I hope you like the skin as well. I had it commissioned by Banana Blocks on Twitter. So if you're curious, that's who it was. I think it is the cutest skin. I love the earmuffs. I think that's my favorite part of the whole skin. But fashion aside, it is time to go collect up some sand and more gravel. With the necessary sand and gravel collected, we then made ourselves some light blue concrete powder, some red concrete powder, and some yellow concrete powder. Now I've got my bucket of water, so here's my thought. If I tower up with all of my concrete powder, I should be able to get the entire stack of concrete powder to turn into concrete with just me pouring the bucket of water over it. So we're gonna try this and see how it works. And what made it better was as I was mining up the concrete blocks of one of the colors and started to pillar up with the other color because the water stream would take a bit to disappear, as I towered up with the next color stack, it would instantly convert it on the way up, which made the whole process go much quicker. And just like that, we have all of our concrete all mined up. Now it is time to go and place our blocks where we want to have our little presents for our nether portal. So I think I'm just gonna lay these out roughly and then we'll actually figure out if we're gonna keep it this way. All right, so we have the basic shapes of all of our little presents all sorted out. We've got a yellow, purple, red, and a light blue one. And we just put little white snow block bows on top of them, and I think they are super cute. Now for this purple one, the nether portal is going to be placed right in here so that when you're looking at this, you'll see the purple swirly particles and know like this is where we go. And then we are going to decorate these rooms with different things, have like a storage room, we'll have a little bedroom, a little staging, smelting type of area and some storage for all of the nether stuff. So we'll kind of know that all of our nether things will be inside the presents. But let's go over and move our nether portal into place this is the most painstaking part. Next, I started placing the obsidian in the new portal frame in the present. However, I was missing a few obsidian pieces. So I went to go mine those up and then we completed the portal frame and got it all lit up. Now from the outside, if we look at it, this is what our purple present looks like. And I think that's so cool to have the nether portal purple matching with our present purple. I think it looks so cool. Now the, the scary part is figuring out if we're going to have the exact same spawn or if we're going to be somewhere different. I'm a little nervous. Okay, <gasps> perfect. Okay, we are linked up exactly where I wanted to be. So we're just gonna go back through. Since we're safe, I don't need to be concerned, but it is very loud, my goodness. Okay, I did all that preparing and didn't really need any of it, but I'd rather be safe than sorry and, well, dead in the nether with all my stuff in there. Now the next step is to decorate all our different rooms. So we're going to go and collect up a bunch of decorative blocks and get decorating up the inside of our presence room. Okay, we've decorated our portal room, so let me show you what we got. So right when you walk in, we've just got some carpet and we actually decided to hide some of those glowstone blocks just to add some extra light. 
And then there's just extra storage. If we're ever trading with piglins and they give us books, we can put them in here. Extra resources can go in here. Whenever we're on our way into the nether, we can grab our little warped fungus to keep the hoglins away. We've just got a special little chest that has the Featherfall 3 boots for us to go inside the nether, extra flint and steel, and some gold to trade with the piglins, some pillaring blocks, and a boat to trap some guys. And then off to this side, we just got a little bedroom and a nice little glass wall so we get some actual natural light in here and just some extra books and storage as well. I think it's super cozy. And over here is where we have all of our storage for the nether. I already started putting away some of our nether blocks into here, but we'll just fill this up over time. And then again, we put some of the glowstone blocks in here as well for some lighting, but I like it. It's simple, it's quaint, and it perfectly hides our nether portal and gives us some festive spirit. The next project I want to work on is is the town square center where we're going to have our giant Christmas tree. So we're gonna collect a bunch of spruce to make a custom tall spruce tree in the middle. We'll collect up a lot of the leaves as well and then a lot of supplies to just completely redesign our paths. I'm thinking we use a lot of colored wool. We use some of the dark oak trap doors that look like chocolate bars. And then we just put a lot of coarse dirt and kind of sprinkle all of those blocks together and then start building up our Christmas tree in the center of it all. Enjoy the time lapse. And just like that, we've got our giant Christmas tree in our town square. And I think it's so cute. I love just the size of it and how this area is just getting filled out so well. We've got the height of all of the lollipops around and now the height of the tree. And I love it so much. My other favorite thing is coming down in between our little builds here and just seeing our Christmas tree come into view even more. I think this is so cool. Like having it perfectly lined up with this street is literally my favorite thing. What's not my favorite thing is that there's literally just snow covering up my little candy gumdrop pads. So I literally think <laughs> when I want to like see the ground, I'll need to like bring a water bucket with me and just like splash some water over it to just get rid of all of the snow. But it, it's kind of funny, you know, uh, not exactly what I had in mind, but it does make sense that it's this way. Now, the next thing I want to do is start collecting some decorations so that we can make this place look really cute. I also want to go to a coral reef and grab some coral fans that will kind of be like the present bow wrappings on the top. And so now we're just going to go and collect some fun things to put under the tree. We'll probably use some colored terracottas under here to represent like Christmas presents. And then we'll also add some decor around the tree to kind of make it look like there's like Christmas ornaments sticking on the sides of it. But that's what we're going to go do. So I'm going to go put my stuff away and then we're going to go on an adventure. Thank you. 
as we adventured towards the coral reef, we saw a village in the distance and decided to explore it. There wasn't much to this village, so we quickly changed our focus and went to go collect up some fan coral for decorations. However, we quickly noticed that we couldn't pick up the fan coral, not even with the shears, so we pivoted our approach and decided to roll a villager in the middle of nowhere for silk touch. I had traveled over 3,500 blocks to get here, I was not going home empty-handed. So we made the books, the bookshelf, and then the lectern, and then got to work re-rolling the villagers, and surprisingly, within 10 minutes, we got silk touch. We next started collecting up the supplies to make a Fletcher's table so that we could trade sticks to get the emeralds that we needed to actually get the silk touch book. So once we had done our trading of emeralds, we were able to get our silk touch book, and the next roadblock was we needed enough iron for an anvil. So we went iron mining with the doors in the water, and we also broke out into a dry cave, which we immediately lit up and started clearing out the mobs. With the mobs cleared out, we collected up a ton of iron and left with over 40 raw iron, which once smelted, gave us our anvil. We added our silk touch book to our hoe and then we got to work collecting up a ton of the coral fans so that we could use it as decorations for our tree and for the presents that go under it. With our resources collected, we began our journey back home but ran into another village and grabbed a saddle from the blacksmith that we had found along the way. Right outside the village, there was a group of horses, so I began trying to tame one so that we could take it back home with us. It didn't take long before I finally was able to tame one and so then we were off with our new friend on the adventure to get back to our Christmas village. And here we are, we made it back home. Home, and we have a horse friend coming home with us, which makes it even more fun. They're definitely not the fastest horse by any means, but we made it back home with them and I thought it was kind of fun. But we are here back at our area. Thank you, buddy, for bringing us all the way back. You are the best little horse. Now, since we went on an adventure and came back with the horse, what should we name our little horse friend that we just made? Now is the fun part. We get to decorate our Christmas tree and add all the little ornaments, a star on top. And since it's Christmas Eve, we've got to put lots of presents under the tree. And here is our Christmas tree with the presents underneath it. It's all decorated, all of the little ornaments. And we even have our little glowstone tree topper as the star on top. But there is still one thing that we need to do. And I think that's leaving some snacks out for Santa underneath our Christmas tree. So now that we have a farmer over here, we've got a bunch of cakes and a bunch of cookies. So I think we definitely have to leave these out for Santa. So I brought down some stairs. And what I want to do is we're going to make a mini table right here. And this will be for Santa. So he'll have a little spot for all of his little snacks, his cake and everything. And we'll just kind of put this out right here. And then he can kind of just like pick the options that he wants of the little snacks and things. So we'll put out some of the cakes for Santa. I think that will be perfect. And we'll even like put some on the tree itself on the ground next to it. And then I wanna add some cookies, but we need to get a barrel or something. All right, I found a chest. So the chest will have all the cookies for Santa. There we go. Our Christmas tree is complete. We've even got presents scattered all around the tree, presents under the tree. And we've also got our a nice little nether portal over here with our giant presents as well. So I think on this note, that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed everything we've gotten done today. And I hope you guys all have a very Merry Christmas. I'll see you in the next one.